Yo, what up, baby? Word on the street. This your boy, Pity Pete. Never mind the chair, because your boy don't care. Hey, word on the street. I got six round draft pick. Texas Tech, greatest receiver come through here. Jakeem Grant. You can hit it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Get a witch. Yeah. Well, a... Also, we got former Red Raider Richard Jones. What it do, baby? Hey, you know what I'm saying? You got to speak up a little bit so the phone will get you. Hey, turn it down a little bit. But, yo, man, we're going to get it right off top, man. Hey, let the people know where you from. D-Town, stay down. Uh, I'm from South Dallas, Texas. You know, that's why I was I was born in Athens, Texas, but raised in Dallas. So, you know, me and my whole family, was, we grew up in Dallas, everywhere. You know South Dallas swag, damn. <laughs> Already, man. So, that's what's up, man. So, hey, so how'd you grow up down there in Dallas, man? As an inner, inner city kid, did you have any brothers and sisters or anything? Uh, I got two brothers. You know, my oldest brother, Marquise, and my younger brother, Keontae. Uh, we had it rough. You know, we, we grew up from... We had nothing, you know, mm -hmm. that's you know, a single parent home. My mom took care of both, all three of us, you know what I'm saying? And, and and it was hard, it was rough, you know. She made sure we stayed up to date with the video games. And even when she stopped, she didn't pay light bills mm -hmm. just so we could have video games. And so it, it was crazy. And just seeing her go through that and, and I was, you can ask her, I, I was one of the type of kid that didn't ask her for nothing because mm. I knew that she was struggling. And so, and I always told her, I was like, Mama, one day you're going to be able to kick up your feet. And mm. so, and that's how I feel, you know. And, Making the draft to the draft is, is and getting drafted that was that was a big important that was one of the big important things I wanted to do is show my mom that you know I appreciate her and show her that you know it's time for you to kick up your legs now and just relax. Mm, I know that's right, right there, man. So you the middle child, right? Yes, sir. Hey, man, I remember them days though, man, yeah. where you wanted like a a game of PS2 or or something like that, and you see that you see that look in your mama's face, she want to give you what you want, and then she was like, hey, but we can let that bill go for about you know what I mean. And, and hey man, we done been there. But now that you in your shoes right now, you know what I'm saying, getting drafted in the sixth round by the Dolphins, everybody can say, I know people on the outside looking in who seen you play and be like, because you know, just like one of my favorite artists is Lil Boosie, like yeah. yours. And Lil Boosie, we all know the struggle he done been through. And it's like, but you know, when you hear him, you know, oh, he gonna make it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like people see you. You know what I'm saying? On the football field, they don't know after the game what you got to go. You might not have no lights when you go home. Or you might not have no food when you go home. So, you know what I'm saying? So, you got to deal with them they, with them people who know you're going to make it too. But once they get to know you personally and they really see your grind. So, which means, man, hey, how you like? How was your attitude growing up? Being a middle child and seeing your mama like that. Did you take every workout in when you was little? Just, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to do a little bit more than this dude right here. Or do a little bit more because... You did have an end goal at the end of the day. I mean, I just had a passion for the game. You know, I just, I just love playing the game, man. And I didn't even, we didn't even start off playing football. You know, we we started off. You know, my mom took us to a skating rink. You know, every mm -hmm. every Saturday. You know, we just stayed up there from two to eleven at night. And just because my mama had to, you know, she had to work that, she had to work on weekends. Mm -hmm. And so we went up there every weekend, and you know, the staff just started treating us like they family, and they just started feeding us like, you know without us paying or whatever so wow. and it was just one day it was just one day we played this game called sharks in the meadows and it's like well four people four people on skates and then a whole bunch of people in the uh, in the center of the skating rink and so i'm the last person to get out and my mom showed up early to pick us up and so they trying to tag me and i'm like and one dude was like i got this little dude and i'm like and in my head i'm like dude you, you, you just don't know <laughs> like and, and so that was the first time I, I made a fall on skates, and I made the whole skating ring just go crazy. Ooh. And my mom just said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to put you in football. And so the rest was history. I've been playing football ever since then. And and my brothers and them that supported me, they they played football too, but they knew that, you know, I was something special. And so mm. they was like, you know, I ain't going to make it, but I know you is. And so, I mean, we, we went through everything. You know, I, I grew up in, you know, gang violence, all that, mm. been shot at, you know, uh, my oldest brother got shot in the neck. You know he's healthy, mm. but he ain't paralyzed. Thank God. Uh, we through. I've been. I've been through everything. You know, and everybody don't realize. You know where I come from. You know, just because you know, when after, after the end of the day, I'm with, I'm with my homeboys. Yeah, you know, I, you could you could talk reckless. You know, but mm -hmm. you know, once you see me out in public, you know, it's like, dang, where it, he seemed like he from the suburb. <laughs> I'm not though. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just a business approach you have to take. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's, that's that's what I that's what I do. You know, I don't come out. You know, I don't sag my pants in front of you know people. I, I pull my pants up, make sure 
I got a head on straight because you know my, just because my mom was a single parent, you know she she played mama and daddy, you mm -hmm. know so she made sure that we grew into the man we are today, you know, and that's why you know I I I've, I've strived so hard to you know make it to to this point, you know, so I could give my kids what I didn't have, you know, so my mama didn't have, so I don't have to, you know, don't pay no bills just so my kids can have this system mm -hmm. or you know these player J's or anything like that, so. That's why my motivation is, you know, to make sure my kids got everything they they want, or that they don't have to need or want for anything. And so, and just it ain't. And I don't even just do it for me. I do it for the people that look up to me too. Mm. You know, so it, and, and I just feel like that. You know, we short guys, we don't get we don't get nothing. So we mm. have to go and take it. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm going. And one day I, I told myself, you know, this is a goal of mine. I, one day that we'll be. Will be looked at as a regular receiver, not just a short receiver. Mm -hmm. You know, the plays, the plays speak for itself. You know, as Big Rich told me, you know, what I'm saying he said, "Man, don't worry about that size; don't matter." Just like when I told Big Rich, you know, uh, I was hurt because you know I ain't get invited to the combine, mm -hmm. and 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 that was one of my goals, you know, because Chris Johnson was my favorite player because speed, you know, that's 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 me, you know, and mm -hmm. I felt like, you know, I I I break the record easy, you know, that'd be that'd be my two mil, you know, Adidas be all over me. Mm -hmm. And I, I told Big Rich, man, dog, I don't, I don't know, man. They, um, I feel like they hating on me. And so that's mm -hmm. why if you turn on my highlight tapes, my highlight tape, the last song is Bootsy, they hate me, you know, because mm -hmm. I feel like that's what they was doing. You know, I had everything they they love, but, you know, it was just my height, you know, and I feel like, you know, height don't mean nothing. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's just like you stepping in the ring, you put a step, a step in the ring with Floyd Mayweather, you put somebody in there six foot, you think Floyd ain't going to come out victorious? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's how I look at it, like. And I'm like, that size don't matter to nothing. You know, it's, if you have the heart and the passion and the will and you want to do it, then go out there and do it. And can't nobody tell you you can't do nothing, you know. And, and I feel like, I, I feel like I'm telling, you know, my fans need to, you know, look at me and just feel like, you know, if Jakeen could do it, why can't I? You know what, mm. what I'm saying? saying I, I seen, and I looked at West like that. You know, I looked at all those guys like that, you know, and I was like, Okay, Darren Spoles did it. Why can't I? Mm. They they may think they may think he's one of a kind, but I'm a one of a kind too. Mm. And that's why I say you know my name is Jakeem the Dream because this is a dream you know for for me to be in the NFL at this size and to show them that you know uh, only short guys like us you know dream to be in the NFL like that. Mm. And and then my name is Jakeem the Dream because. Now, it's only people people dream, you know, our tall receivers dream to do what I can do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I wasn't blessed with height, but I was blessed with, you know, speed and quickness. So, mm -hmm. you know, I got other Gosh. attributes. I got I got other attributes that, you know, a tall receivers don't have. So, mm -hmm. you know, don't don't just, you know, knock me down because I'm short. You know what I'm saying? Because once you turn on the highlight tape, you, you never know. You don't know how tall I am. Yeah, I know. That's right right there, man. So basically, man, where there is a will, there is a way. Hey, and do what you love and love what you do. Life's about making your dreams come true. And most importantly, don't you give up. Because this man right here, man, he said, if he can make it, why can't you make it? You know what I'm saying? So, man, I heard you speak something about uh, Floyd Mayweather. I read something on you like you really like his work ethic or something, man. So what really drew you to Floyd? Uh, what drew me to Floyd is just, you know, his his ambition for the, for the sport. You know, he felt like he can't be beat. And, and he 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 trained like that and he fight like that. And if you if you go out there and and do the same thing and just train the way that Floyd trained, you know, because when you look at it, he he won the best athletes in the world, you know, mm -hmm. if not the best, you know, because he never lost, you know. Um, yeah, he probably came close to winning or uh, losing, but you know, he he found a way to bounce back and, and come out victorious. And so I feel like that's you know that's that's. You know that's what you need to do. You know, not just in sports. You know, in life. You know, if if, you, if things not going your way, make it go your way. You know, mm. don't just get down and be like, man, I don't know what to do now. You know, what I'm saying just you pick your head up and, and keep moving. You know, what I'm saying because if you don't, if if you don't get back up, you know, life will keep you right there where you is. You know, what I'm saying it'll, sure. it'll beat you down. Yeah. It'll, it'll, I mean, life has no sympathy for nobody. And so mm -hmm. and I feel like you know, being my height, you know, I'm taking critics. You know, I could have said, you know, man, forget it. You know, I don't, I don't want to take no critics no more i just go get a job but i, I was like no nah, i'm gonna keep doing what i do and i don't care what you say about me you can say i'm i'm sure you know i i can't do this i can't do that but at the end of the day well, when you put me on the field you put the ball in my hand there ain't nobody gonna stop me so and and i showed that from saturday 
and I showed that from practice to Saturday, from practice to Saturday, it's just a routine thing. And so, you know, Floyd Mayweather, and I feel like people just say, oh, he cocky, he arrogant. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to have some of that cockiness in you. You have to feel like you can't be touched. Because if you feel like you can't be touched, you don't, you're going to eventually start playing like that. And, mm -hmm. and you got to think, everybody want to bash him for that, but you got to think, Muhammad Ali did it, Mike mm -hmm. Tyson did it, you know, mm -hmm. all the greats did it, you know, Deion Sanders did it, you know, mm -hmm. so. Why, why, you know, bash him, you know, and, and I feel like I have that same attitude, you know, and, and I'm going to continue to have that attitude. I'm No, nah, you can't stop me, dog. I don't, I don't care who you is, you know. I don't care if you're a 10-year vet in the NFL. When you go against, when you go against me, it, it ain't it ain't nothing to it. We're we in the same league. We're in the same league together, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't care how long you've been here. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing something special to the table, and so are you. But so are you. I'm going to show you, you know, my, my specialness is going to over, overpower yours. Yeah. And so that's how I feel, you know. It don't matter who you is, you know. I don't care if I don't care if you know if it's prime time was still in the league. I'm still gonna talk trash to him. I'm yeah, dog, you can't stop me either. Yeah, you know what I'm saying because you you have to have that mentality. Like, mm -hmm. Can't nobody stop you. And if you don't, then you are gonna be average. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I want to be right. great. I want to be great. I want to be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, and probably what you know. Being up there with Barry Sanders, you know, mm. prime time, all that, and so that that's that's just me, you know. And I always looked up to Dante Hall, and y'all, mm. you can, I mean, anybody can vouch for me. That dude was a, he, I mean, he was a beast. Yeah. And so and I want to be, I want to be better than him. I want to be better. Everybody say, you know, uh, he gonna be the next Devin Hester. I'm not gonna be the next Devin Hester. I'm gonna be me. You know, I'm just, yeah. I'm just keeping the dream, and and that's what I'm gonna be. It's not. I mean, I'm not Devin Hester. I'm not saying Devin Hester not good. No, he great. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to be better than him, yeah. and that's that's. I tell people, no, I'm not gonna be next to nobody. I'm gonna be me. Yeah. You know, everybody gonna say, the dream. Everybody gonna tell people, uh, you gonna be the next Jakeem the dream. No, don't be me. Be you. Yeah. And that's that. That's a, uh, and man, that's one thing, man. Being you is the best thing that you can do. You know what I'm saying? Because there's only one you. And that, the man, listen to you talk, man. Brings a quote to my head, man. A quote. The quote is: "Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard." Mm -hmm. So if you got talent and you got a hard work ethic, sky the is the limit. You came the dream. Okay, man. So you want? So you are the best uh, receiver to come through Texas Tech. Number speaking right there. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't. You feel me? Okay, so coming up through tech, man, knowing you didn't get uh, selected to the combine, and this is where my homie Richard Jones comes in at. You got Richard right here. Richard from uh, Houston, Texas, former Red Raider as well. You know what I'm saying? So you helped train uh, Mr. Jakeem the Dream, right? Mm -hmm. Already, man. So, so how was that like? Did you guys just come in and just automatically like, because uh, being two athletes, you know what I'm saying? Especially D1 athletes. So we got a different work ethic straight off top than just any kind of athlete. So you guys already, did you guys just hit it off and just like know how to work hard? Or did you have to like really push them and push them? Nah, the, the work ethic was already there, man. Like you, I mean, you just heard it. He wanted to be the greatest. And that's the attitude he had when he came into the gym. Um, it was just like, man, when when he first walked into the, um, when he first walked into the, uh, to the, to the, to the gym, um, he just he dabbed me up. He's like, "Hey, big dog, what up?" Big? You know what I'm saying? It's like it was like it was like it was like it was a connection there, like like from the jump, man. And um, it was just crazy how actually how it all was set up. Though. I feel like it was a God thing, man, because mm -hmm. like I knew about him, I watched him play or whatnot, but I never thought to like friend request him on Facebook. And so I was just on my Facebook one day, and uh, he popped across like su like suggest the friend suggestion list or People something. You may know. Yeah. yeah. And so I just I clicked him. I was like, "He accept me. He accept me. He don't. He don't." And so. Uh, then he accepted the friend request, man, and I really wasn't thinking that never. Then whenever I found out uh, his agent had called D1, and uh, they wanted to get him set up over there, and I was just like, all right, God, I, I see what you're doing. And then especially when he came in and we just, like, clicked it, like, I hit it off like that, dog. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, it's a God thing, you know what I'm saying? And, dog, when I say, man, like, people was telling me, like, he was fast, you know what I'm saying? But I'm like, man, you don't want no, man, don't, don't nobody run no 4-1. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody, dog, and... Like, as soon as he came in there, like, the first thing we had to do was test him. And, dog, when I say this, man, he was blazing. blazing. Like, my, my fingers weren't even fast enough, dog. <laughs> no, nah, but, no, nah, he, he was he was moving, dog. And he was fat. The work ethic was there, man. Like, all that was him, dog. Like, I just I just cleaned it up. I just oh, cleaned man. him up. I just helped him with the technical stuff, man, and helped helped him with his start, helped him with his uh, steps and, and his, his jump and all that stuff, dog. And the rest is history, man. Like, 
Nimbus don't lie, dog. He four one. Four one, yeah, man. I seen it. Like when y'all recorded it, you know what I'm saying? I think I was, I was sitting at the crib barbecuing or something. And uh, I seen it pop up on your page. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I see everything like uh, through Rich. And man, I was like, man, let me see this right here. And man, I'm, I, I hollered at my wife. I said, babe. <laughs> I said, no. Nah. Because I, mean, I know, like, I knew, like, that was your goal. I think your goal was like to run like 4 0 or something, yeah. though, right? And so 